Friends, uh, doubters, travellers who've come from afar, there are people from Northern Ireland, people from Newcastle. Thank you for coming and for giving us the benefit of the doubt. Change always requires some first hard steps, and you've made the first steps to come. So I want to thank you for giving us the benefit of the doubt. Welcome to the big tent. You are today the, what we hope will be the starters of a big tent movement that's going to move around the country and stimulate the deep grassroots discussions about new models of change that we need. In a minute, I'm going to introduce our two kickoff speakers for this morning. But I wanted just to set the scene. Last night, we had a fascinating conversation uh, after two presentations from Liam Halligan and Ian Martin, both of whom distinguished writers who've written about Big Bang and the Big Crash and Big Debt and Big Government. The, the underlying economics that shapes the crisis, the political tsunami that we're living through. And this morning, we're going to start to hear from people who've got solutions to the deep challenges that we face. Today, the Prime Minister goes to Florence. We're so used to saying Brussels, aren't we? She goes to Florence, where better, the home of the European Enlightenment, to speak about the next stage of our relationship with Europe. The high politics of Brexit are not my business. Today, in a non-coincidental move, we meet actually in her constituency with me as her uh, person appointed to drive the domestic policy renewal to ask what I think is every bit as, as important a question as what is this, uh, the shape of the Brexit negotiation. And it is how can we trigger and make this a moment of national renewal, a moment of electrifying domestic renewal so that whether or not you voted for Brexit or didn't, like me, you're excited by the prospect of the freedoms that we're about to win, possibly expensive freedoms. And my argument is we better make sure we use them so that we can tell future generations you had to be there. We use that freedom to electrify our own domestic sense of our own domestic politics and the causes that we believe in. We have the great privilege, it doesn't always feel like it, to live through a political tsunami. The last few years have seen tectonic realignments of political uh, orientation and Andrew Cooper is going to share some of that with us in the politics tent some deep analysis on what's really going on but the truth is the country is disorientated Parliament is disorientated the traditional boundaries of political allegiance and conversation don't fit the scale of the questions that this crisis asks and that's why I've taken the initiative to create uh, this big tent initiative a place where people from the centre-left and centre-right we've got people here uh, from the Labour Party. We've got uh, Liam Byrne, who asked me to co-chair with him the all-party group on inclusive growth. We've got Stuart Wood, one of the great thinkers of New Labour. We've got um, people from across the centre ground who share a belief that if centre ground mainstream politics doesn't rise up to this challenge, we'll leave a vacuum open for the tyranny of populists from left or right. Vacuums get filled by people making easy promises and then trust in politics per se simply deepens and collapses. So today I want to ask that question, can we make this a moment of national renewal and what might be the seeds of it? National renewal led from Westminster, but even more importantly led from the localities around the country that are experiencing this crisis. There's a big theme today of local leaders coming to tell us about projects, initiatives, social enterprises, businesses that are driving social, economic and political renewal. And guess what? It's interesting. They tend to go together. Vibrant democracies tend to go with vibrant economies and vibrant societies. The choice, I put it to you, is quite stark. If we, the centre ground, don't rise up and confront this challenge, those offering easy promises will fill them. And I want to suggest to you that Jeremy Corbyn is simply offering easy promises to deep grievances. We should respect his narrative on the grievances and come up with solutions to them. Because I put it to you that his prescription is basically Venezuelan socialism, and those of us old enough as I am this year to remember the 1970s will know that we will simply end up losing all those hard-won victories of the new Labour uh, generation who managed to put the Labour Party in a place where it was pro-enterprise and pro-innovation, and those of us in the Conservative Party who believe that innovation and enterprise generates wealth which then is fed back into creating new opportunities in a virtuous circle. I think we face a stark choice as a country. Is this a moment we become a poor uh, and older, marginalised old people's home with the buccaneering entrepreneurs going global? Or is it a place where we become a headquarters of that global buccaneering spirit and create the wealth and the opportunity and the new models of public service delivery to tackle that structural deficit that we heard about last night? Big issues, and they need 
big ideas. And this initiative is about two things. One, opening up the tent so that people don't have to belong to the Labour Party or to the Conservative Party to get involved. We have to open up and show that we're prepared to hear the criticism, engage with it, and understand the underlying core issues that are driving it. And there are a number that are driving that millennial disconnection from politics. And we're going to hear a lot today about them, about housing, about debt, about tuition fees, about those underlying economic issues that shape the insurgency that we're seeing. But today we're also doing something else. This event's been put together by a group of small business entrepreneurs backing and investing in other businesses all around the country. And we're launching an initiative called the Capital Ideas Foundation. You'll hear more about it later on today. It's an entrepreneurial foundation to fund both the intellectual policy work required to dismantle the easy, empty promises of the new left, but also to challenge and put forward the arguments, the policies required to make markets work for a new generation. To argue that if we're going to make the banking system, the financial system, the energy market, the housing market work for a new generation to solve their problems, then we'll need to unleash a spirit of innovation, entrepreneurship and deep reform. And that movement is about putting forward those ideas and taking this tent around the country and taking it to those areas of the country that want to have a conversation and need that spirit of entrepreneurship and innovation. I was in Northern Ireland as a minister two years ago. Do you know over 50% of people in Northern Ireland work for the state? There are a very small number of companies in Northern Ireland creating the opportunities that most of us here take for granted in the affluent southeast of England. So we want this tent to go around the country and celebrate that spirit of entrepreneurship and of innovation. And by entrepreneurship, I don't mean what it's sometimes characterized as being, that sort of get rich quick, tell Sid, I'm all right, Jack, pull up the ladder, 1980s caricature. It's the entrepreneurship of the people you're about to hear from, social entrepreneurs, people who take that spirit and invest in their communities and reach out and invest in their staff and do it not for the money, but for the fulfillment and the excitement and the nobility of team endeavor, purposive endeavor, and bringing people on a journey with them. Today, I hope that you will decide not just to be part of this day, which you've done by coming here and finding us in this field tucked away in Berkshire, but I hope you'll leave wanting to be part of the Capital Ideas Foundation. We don't claim to have all the answers, but we are going to ask some of the big questions. A word on format just before I introduce our first two speakers. This is highly participative. Nearly all of you here could have been giving a talk in the tent. We want you all to be speaking. The speakers are just here to provoke, and we want you to say some really bold and radical things. Please don't feel you need to be polite, challenge us, and demand and get responses. And the chairmen's chairwomen have all got whistles. This is British Bake Off meets University Challenge. No one's going to have enough time. Everything's going to be too short. I want everyone leaving thinking, I want to go back and do that in more detail. And please have a look at the digital connections. Please tweet, uh, signal to people. Please tweet respectfully. Um, Please tweet in the spirit of this event. But we want people to know they can connect with this, send in messages, ask questions, and we'll be growing the digital footprint of this initiative over the next few weeks and months. Crucially, move around. If you haven't got a program, please pick one up. We've got an incredible array of talks here, and there's a big digital platform that will allow you to engage in those conversations. I want to introduce our first two speakers, and then we're going to see a short film. Thank you all for coming. A short film, and then I'm going to hand over to Maggie Pagano to chair this session. Most of all, enjoy today. Please get it off your chest, get on the soapbox, have your say, and let me know, let us all know at the end, how you want us to take this forward and whether you'd be up for it. Thank you for coming, and thank you. Please welcome our two speakers.